from the south, the southern most city in the United States is Brownsville, Texas. Punk is singing the world's Greyhound bus station, so it's the ultimate in funk and the first generation rock and roll all combined in one. Are you the leader of the group? No, there ain't no leader of the band. I'm just the pretty face. Well, who gives the cues and ends the songs and talks the most? Uh, <laughs> no, not the guy that anything to do with. Let's not get tacky, lady. <laughs> Throw you out on your ass. You don't watch it. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. I don't okay. think she meant to be I'm nasty. just trying to be. Oh, I wasn't trying to be nasty either. Matter of fact, I'm so nice I'll even light your cigarette again. But I'm too late. Ah! Fate and fortune always leave me behind. Are you on a regular tour with John Winter? No, we just came down to help him out in these two days. Played in Birmingham. Well, no, in Birmingham. Mobile. Uh, Mobile last night and right here. What are you doing after this? Uh, we're going to go back home oh, for a week. Uh, get some more tunes together for our forthcoming album. And uh, then we're back on the road for about three weeks out. Playing material tonight? What's going to be in the new album? Uh, let's see, we're going to try and make a mental note of what we did tonight. Uh, a couple of tunes, yeah, a couple of tunes. And, uh, Where were they in the program? Uh, let me see, we opened up the set with uh, a combination boogie, which is off the Motor City Connection album. Then we did Leader of the Game, which is on the School Punks album. Then we did... Um, uh, then we did Wanted Dead or Alive, which was on the uh, second album. Oh, and I in the town. Then we did uh, Roadrunner, which is off our first album, No BS. Then we did uh, Martian Boogie, which is the tune that may or may not be on the next album. If it isn't, it'll be on the live album, which will be the one after the next one we do. And uh, then we did uh, Smoke in the Boys' Room. And we did uh, an old Sun record, old favorite of mine on my record collection called We Want a Boogie. And then we did uh, King's Party. And that just about sums it up. That's it for Saturday Night in Dalton. Quite a show. It really was. I Those dug it. I dug it. The crowd was really fine. You know, like, there's a certain energy that happens when you're on stage that can just sort of, like, sweep you away and make you play four times better than you would ever dream of playing and put, you know, four times more energy into what you're doing, you know. And that kind of energy just lifts you up, and that's the kind of thing that was happening tonight. You know? Because, like, you can get into a town and be all, you know, tired and be sore from last night's gig, maybe, or something. And um, tonight, the audience enhances, because we like a one-to-one -one thing. We don't want it to be like band up here, audience down there. You know, you came to see us, yeah. you know. If we feel like it, maybe we'll give you a good show, you know. Don't feel like that. You owe them everything. You owe them your life's blood if you want, if you can do it. We have it to give. Yeah. And like, as far as I'm concerned, it's like no such thing as bad audience if there's a good performance. Yeah. So, the crowd tonight was mighty, mighty fine. Mighty fine. Of course, crowds in the South are always like that. I love playing down South, man. I go nuts. Because crowds down South, I guess it's because everybody either, because there's so much more music down here, you know, from like, you know, Tennessee on to the South, man. It's like everybody either knows somebody who plays guitar or plays themselves or, every, you know, it's much more musical type of environment. And so I think people have more empathy for performers down here, you know. Yeah, a lot of big names come out of, in fact, right around this area. Bobby Goldsboro is from Denton. All yeah. kinds of people that really went out well, and made the first, a lot of money. Well, you know, the whole first generation of rock and roll came from the South. Jerry Lee Lewis, Buddy Holly, you know, Carl Perkins, uh, all of the Sun Rockabilly artists, Sonny Burgess, Charlie Feathers, all those cats. Everybody came from, like, down South, you know, and so... Uh, which is why our group is named Brownsville Station, getting back to your original question. Okay, next question, your turn. Yes, uh, who writes your lyrics? Um, it's really a combination. All four of us write together. Uh, <clears throat> the main lyricist in the band is our drummer, Henry Weck, and myself. And usually, but that's not like we do 
all the lyrics and the other guys with the music. It's really a combination of things, like Bruce will write lyrics, Michael will write lyrics, Michael and I will get together and do lyrics, Henry and Bruce will get together and do lyrics, the four of us will get together and do songs, you know, so it's a combination. Why did you ask that about the lyrics? I'm curious. Well, I, the way I perceived it, I'm familiar with your single that you had, Smoky and the Boys, mm -hmm. and I liked it as a, as a song that you hear over and over on the radio, it wore all right, and they do tend to overplay even a good thing, but uh, I always thought it was a good, strong song. Well, thank you. And I was not really familiar with any of your other music. And so tonight is actually the first time that I've been able to sit down and listen to what you do. And most of the lyrics were, from where I was sitting, way up, almost indecipherable, except for certain phrases and things I could hear. And I noticed, a, a, of course, a real strong, strong in, uh, emphasis on guitar, which I never knew was, was the case, not really knowing the group. And then I was hearing the lyrics, and I was curious who put the lyrics together. It, they seemed almost as like there was as much in the lyrics to do with audience participation and getting people into it as there were actually into the, the story that was being told, you know? Well, rock and roll is excitement. It's audience involvement. It's... Uh, it's like being up in front of 10,000 people, you know, or 5,000 people, or 3,000, whatever it is, man, you know. It's, it's like sticking your finger into an open socket. It, it, there's no way, I wish I could take every person in the audience and stick them up on stage and let them see what we see. You know, it, it's the most, it's That the would most, be a trip. I've always wondered how it feels It's the most to incredible up high in the world. It's, it's better than anything, man, besides that. I mean, it's just, it's just incredible. And so for Brownsville Station, our music is partying, it's good timing, it's, uh, it's palling around together, it's friendship, uh, it's love, it's sex, it's perversion, it's uh, drinking and listening to the radio and cruising for burgers. It's, it's, a, it's a culmination of everything that goes down in America. You know, and uh, we feel that our music, the people that we play for, it's an emotional outlet for them too. Because there's a lot of people in this country who can't <coughs> do what they want to do. You know, like the Hardys and the Emotion. Yeah, you know, it's just uh, our our whole our whole music is based on the great what if. You know. What if all of a sudden you came to a concert and somebody, you know, strapped a backpack on you with an amplifier and gave you a guitar and, like, all of a sudden went, Wang! and you could play guitar every bit as good as anybody in Brownsville Station could, okay? And just, it's the great what if, and all of a sudden you'd see, you know, 10,000 people out there all with like little backpacks on and guitars, man. It'd be the guitar army, you know, just, and just, or the great what if. What if you could take an audience on the road with you? You know, <laughs> just hire tour buses, man, you know, and go, and they would experience the same thing touring that you would, you know, you'd all chomp down together, you'd have your leaving times, you know. And I guess that's, something about our music that always excites me because I always think that someday that will happen you know someday something just so strange and bizarre will happen after seven years together as a band we've seen probably well we've seen every state in this country with the exception of Alaska we've seen uh, all through South America Panama things like that, you know, the whole shot there. And we've just experienced a lot of things. Those things have got to affect you, you know. And growing up in the Midwest, you can't help but be high energy, rock and roll, go out and, you know, have attitude music. There's no way, because 
it's a much more frantic pace up north. It really is. So all those are reflections to our music. The what if angle, the someday, you know, something really strange is going to happen. It will happen at a concert, man. And someday I expect to hear a crowd that will like, you know, just go so crazy, man, that they will actually change the architecture of the building by sound waves alone. I have no interest in people who want to sit down and analyze our music. I mean, that's fun, you know what I mean? But rock and roll, to me, our rock and roll isn't meant to be analyzed. It's meant to be enjoyed. And if people enjoy our music, that's fine with me. If they don't enjoy our music, then get the hell out and go someplace else. You know? I don't want to be, I got enough, I got enough doubts of my own telling me something you believe in. And I believe in rock and roll. Simple as that. All right. Thank you very much. My pleasure. I appreciate your time.